because of major sins like the Khawarij. Not the way of the Murji'ah, who feel safe, so safe that they think they have reached paradise because they have delayed actions from being part of Iman. Not the way of the Sufis who are extreme in their worship, not following the worship of Rasulullah So their love for their Shaykh is greater than Allah Azza wa Jal. Their love for their Shaykh is greater than Rasulullah And one of them said to me that my Shaykh even knows if I've prayed Fajr in the morning. Just by looking at my face. And the hadith we mentioned says that shaitan urinates in the air, not in the face. But he knows ilm al-ghayb, mashallah. Nasallah salama. How does he know ilm al-ghayb? The knowledge of the unseen. And they praise them above the praise of Allah. Look at what the Rafida did in Iraq. Yes, the khawarij, they cause a lot of turmoil. And they bomb people innocently. They do a lot of yani, corruption. And they did lots of corruption in Iraq. The qaida. Of course, we're against them. And Sheikh Sayyid Sahimi in Masjid al Nabawi, he's refuting them. And refuting those who are their leaders from this. He calls them the, uh, uh, the, the leaders of caves or the scholars of caves. Bin Laden and his people. Yes, they're in the caves hiding. While the people were killed in Afghanistan. Women, children, thousands were being killed. He's safe in his cave. Because he called for jihad in a time when there's not jihad. He called for jihad in the time when the conditions of jihad are not met. And he called for that. Subhanallah. In a situation which is not jihad. How can jihad be in Iraq when people killing each other and the raya of tawheed is not clear? Everybody fighting and killing each other. This is facade. This is facade, corruption. People killing each other. In Palestine, likewise, if you don't have the ability to repel the enemy, don't fight. The Messenger Sallallahu spoke about Ya'juju Ma'juj when they will come. And Isa السلام, would not be ordered to fight Ya'juju Ma'juj. Why? Because he doesn't have the ability to repel them. So, he said, go to Mount Tur. This is from the proof that Shaykh Abayyid Hafizullah mentions, and many of the scholars mention, that Jihad al-Qudum al both offensive and defensive, requires quwa, strength enough to repel the enemy. If, and this is in a legitimate war, not illegitimate, not putting bombs around your waist and blowing innocent people, innocent women and children. The Prophet forbade, even in jihad, to kill innocent women and children. And so 11, 7, 9 11 and 7 7, this is against Islam and has nothing to do with Islam and nothing to do with the false jihad that these people claim of killing innocent women and children. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Mumtahina, He says, La yanhaakum Allahu anil ladina. لَمْ يُقَاتِلُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتَقُصِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ Allah does not forbid you from those who don't drive you out of your homes, nor do they fight you for your deed, that you be just towards them. That you be just towards them and righteous towards them. So your neighbors, whether they be Muslims or non-Muslims, we must be wasatiya, uh, uh, the middle course, just towards them, righteous towards them. Maybe they will accept Islam. But look at these individuals, they come with a hook. This one. Abu Hamza comes with a hook on his hand. Yaqi, change the hook, yaqi. Islam didn't come like that. Islam is rahmah, mercy. Come with a hook like this, showing the people that I have a hook. And they have it on front headlines. Look at this man in the Quran on this side. Is this rahmah? It's mercy? You are showing that Islam is barbaric. Islam is not barbaric. And Shaykh, one of the mashaykh of Medina mentioned that the reason for the Danish people and this, you know, the book they have already, we know that the, the, the kuffar, the disbelievers, they have hatred for the Muslims. But but we are responsible as well. We are responsible. We should call them to Islam. So the fact that the Khawarij get away with it and get away with calling the people to turmoil. They are the reason for the Danish cartoons that you saw. They are the reason for this. Because it is them that call to killing innocent people. It is them that call, not Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa forbade the killing of women and children. Not like Abu Qatar, they say it's allowed in, in, in these cases. It is haram to kill yourself with your own hands. Whereas the wasatiyah in killing yourself with your own hands. It is haram in war as well as outside war. And we're not in a battlefield. For even anyone like Qardawi to say it's allowed to kill yourself with your own hands in the suicide missions. It is haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't kill yourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ Don't destroy yourselves with your own hands. And the man who killed himself in a battlefield, let alone outside a battlefield, in a battlefield he put a dagger on himself. The Sahaba thought, mashallah, he was good at fighting in a legitimate war. He was good at fighting. The Sahaba, Rasul said, huwa fin nar. He's in the hellfire. So one of them witnessed. He said, yes, I followed his situation and I saw him put a dagger. He couldn't withhold the, the pain. He put a dagger and he put, placed it underneath himself and killed himself. In a battlefield, somebody was supposed to be quite good in fighting and so on. The Prophet said he's in the hellfire. Why? Because he killed himself with his own hands. And there's no other proof to say that it's allowed. And as for the story of the ghulam, as Qardawi uses in order to say it's allowed to kill yourself with your own hands, that story, first and foremost, he didn't kill himself with his own hands. Other than him killed him. Second, secondly, he was already going to die. Because they were throwing him off the cliff, he didn't die. They tried to drown him, he didn't die. And then he said, I'll tell you, gather the people and I'll tell you how you can kill me. And he told them to make the shahada and so on. And look at the benefit that came from it. All of the people in that community became Muslim. <coughs> what benefit is in suicide operations? Rather, you kill one in Palestine like that, they kill ten. You kill ten, they kill one hundred and bulldoze the, the, the whole. So what is the solution? Hatta tarji'u ila deenikum. Until you return to your deen. This is the solution. Hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood. Until you return to your deen. This humiliation is because of ourselves. It's because of what our own hands have put forward. Calling people to Tawheed and Sunnah. This is the solution. Which deen? The deen of Jama'at Tabliq? The deen of Quran Muslimin? La. The deen, the deen of Takfir? La. The deen of Tafjir? La. The deen of the Sahaba, Sheikh Muhammad al Banna said. This is the deen. Hatta tarji'u ila deenikum. The deen that you return with the ulama at the heads of, the, of this deen. وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا And they are قوام, they have qawama or they have qist, uprightness in all affairs. What time is Maghrib? <laughs> so then Sheikh Sa'ad Suhaimi says, a shirk, the Prophet used to fear shirk for us. Because he says, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ الشِّرْكَ الْأَصْغَرُ the, 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 the thing that I fear for you the most, even more than Dajjal, he said, is a shirk al-asghar. Shirk al-asghar is like a black ant on a black rock in the midst of pitch black night. It can creep. So easy. That's why the Messenger وسلم, in his sujood, he would say, Ya maqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh, change of the hearts. Make my heart firmly upon your deen. And the Rasul at night, he would seek refuge from shirk, knowingly and unknowingly, falling into that. Allah Fearing that you fall into shirk. This is Rasulullah. How about us? Are we so free from shirk? The Sufis, the modern day Sufis, so called intellectualists, say you can learn aqidah in 10 minutes. You can learn tawheed and aqidah in 10 minutes. So, why did the ulama of the past spend all their years writing books of aqidah? Because many groups came out refuting the correct aqidah and correct position of Ahlul Sunnah. Did they waste their time? When Imam Ahmad rahimullah, wrote Usul al Sunnah, and he died too for one hijriyah, did he waste his time? When the Imam Ayn al Raziyain, Abu Hatim al Razi and Abu Zur al Razi, in the third century, when they wrote, the, when it was mentioned, they mentioned the aqidah to, 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 to one of their sons, Abd Rahman, in the third century, did they waste their time? When Ibn Abi Asim wrote Kitab al Sunnah, did he waste his time? When the, the four a'imma, when they taught their people to not take from me blindly and to take from the Quran and Sunnah, did they waste their time? And they left behind students who taught their people. Did they waste their time? And they taught it for more than 10 minutes. Their whole lifetime, from the cradle to the grave, yani from the beginning of Talab al-ilm until you die. Rasulullah right until his death, right until his death and his teaching Tawheed.